Hi, this is Frederick from Rare Repair. Today we're going to be doing a little gilding on a lamp base. It's a very old piece. And this is the top part that goes inside of the base. It's a jade parrot with a gilt wood stand, all hand carved and gold leafed. It's very beautiful. I finished with the lamp part of it, rewiring it uh, and bringing up a little of this brass and bringing up some of this gilt bronze here or gilt I believe it might be bronze it could be steel it's a beautiful piece and I just wanted to show you basic gilding uh, which I don't have to do anything fancy on this uh, gold leaf is basically going to be the base uh, and then I'm going to use glazes which is really the art part of bringing these two together so that they're it's just beautiful. When the light's on, it'll shine on it and reflect all this marvelous hand-carved detail. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take a little bit of gold. Uh, and I'm wearing gloves. The reason I'm wearing gloves is not because this stuff is toxic, but because gold will stick to your fingers. Um, you can see I can touch this with the glove, and it doesn't stick to my hand. Um, also, there are other ways gold can be affected. Um, you can build up static on the brush by brushing it across your hand and then touching the gold, and the gold actually should stick to it. It'll build up an electrostatic charge on the brush, and it'll actually grab, let's see if we can get it a little bit better, and it'll grab the gold. It's okay if it doesn't do it, but actually it most of the time it does. Just when I'm shooting YouTube videos, it doesn't. But usually it'll pick it up. A little static charge will pick it up. The Italians actually used to brush their brushes, which was a different brush, a broad brush. They would take their brush and they would brush it across their hair to get a little bit of the oil from their hair. And that oil would stick to the gold and they would be able to pick up the gold leaf. But here what we're going to do is we're just going to lay it on. And it's, it's, it's very delicate, but it's not anything to be afraid of. Just let it fall on there. There it is. See, no harm done. This little 22 karat gold. Gold is wonderful because it's timeless. Look at that, isn't that marvelous? Now it's not just sticking to the wood. Um, I used an aqua size or a water-based size. Uh, and the reason I used Aqua Size uh, is because it has great adhesion um, and it will stick to this wonderfully. Um, sometimes also temperatures change oil base sizes. I'm burnishing the gold right now with a brush. And I've let this Aqua Size or the water base size dry on here for about three hours to let it really dry and get tight and a nice strong surface so that when you're gilding this what's happening is this is sticky so the gold the actual leaf that's very very thin is sticking to that glue and it's adhering to it very tightly look how much coverage I got with just one leaf I mean that's that's really great I won't have to use an amazing amount of gold and Gold's very expensive right now. I believe last time I checked it was about $1,700 an ounce. Um, and gilding has gone up in price as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gold leaf the entire piece. And then I'm going to use oil-based glazes. And that's where the real art's going to come in. And I'm going to match this color. And by looking at this color, underneath this beautiful jade parrot, it's really amazing piece, um, is I'm going to look and my eye is going to tell me what colors are there. And you can look and see there's a little bit of red and a little bit of a greenish brown, like a raw umber and a burnt umber color that's over the top of the gold. Now also gold is semi-transparent, especially when it's thin like this. Um, so whatever's underneath that gold, would you believe that color comes through the gold and you can actually see underneath a little bit. 
we still had a very good base here. The gesso was still holding uh, and the bowl was holding on. The French clay or the clay was holding on to the piece. So it came out um, pretty well. It's going to be really fun to do, but this is just a little area of the gold that I'm going to do. Here, I'll lay on another piece. And also, sometimes you can improvise and grab a... I've got a paintbrush here, and I can just pick it up and move it if I want to. So I don't touch this, because this is sticky still from the, from the sizing. And that's the, the coating that you put onto the piece that you're gold leafing. So we'll lay one more piece on. Like I said, the gloves really are great. They come in handy. I've seen people actually put baby powder on their hands too to keep from the gold from, uh, from sticking to their fingers. Um, here's the excess. I want a good coating on here, so if I bunch it in a little bit, that's fine. Uh, and gold is very, it's soft. So I can see how that falls off and flakes. You can pick that up and, and put it right back on there. This piece here, just put it back in and reuse it. When I'm done, I'm going to have a little pile of gold, which I'm not going to throw away. I'm going to put that in a jar uh, and I'll be able to reuse it again for detail and, and getting in. And look at that. Isn't that rich? So beautiful. And it'll last, uh, I don't even want to tell you, you won't believe me how long it'll last. They found pieces of gilded work that was that were buried in the ground for 3,000 years and when they took them out the gold was still intact on the on the wooden pieces. That That's a remarkable. Um, and this will stay nice and shiny. The other thing for the gloves too is I really don't want to be touching this stuff all the time. Um, it's not good especially with metals. You don't want to touch metals. They start tarnishing so I want to keep this nice work that I've done um, in restoring this piece so that it stays the way it is uh, and it'll go back together. And maybe I'll do another video on glazing. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.